I think the suffering of wild insects is one of the foremost ethical issues. Most insects die within a few days or weeks of birth, and even adults typically only live for weeks or months before dying, potentially painfully. I favor policies that reduce the number of insects that are born involuntarily into short lives that often end gruesomely. In order to gain intuition about what a bug's life is like and how we can reduce their populations, I find it helpful to look at bugs around me, which is what this video does. This video tours some bugs that I found around my house in May 2016. It's an incomplete sampling and it focuses on bugs indoors because filming outside was hard to do due to the sun's glare on my laptop screen. The video is mostly taken with a Cronova USB digital microscope. Here you can see a long dead fly on a windowsill. The fly may have died in the winter several months ago. Next to it was an ant that had been wrapped in spider silk. Here's another dead fly. And here are two dead ladybirds. One has its wings splayed open. The other is wrapped in spider silk. This fly got trapped in a strand of a spider web. Unfortunately, there is even more death in the basement. Here's a mouse or rat that may have starved or dehydrated a while ago. It's the only non-bug in this video. Next to it is a red bucket containing decaying organic material, which my friend put there. On top of the bucket is a spider that has made a web across the whole top surface. The reason seems to be that there are flies inside the bucket, probably fungus gnats. To see why I think these are fungus gnats, here's a still picture of one of the flies in the bucket. And here are pictures of fungus gnats from Google Images. The gnats seem to be eating the decaying organic material that's inside the bucket. If any gnats come to the surface, they get trapped in the spider's web. It's a difficult ethical and empirical question whether we should be glad about or opposed to the spider eating some of these gnats. If there's a fixed amount of fungus food that the gnats will end up eating, then it seems bad for there to be a spider because the spider hinders the process of removing the food and increases the number of painful prey deaths per unit time. On the other hand, if the fungus in the bucket will eventually be buried or otherwise made unavailable to the gnats after some time, then the spider might reduce the total number of gnats that will ever live in the bucket which might be good. I can't tell if this is also a fungus gnat or something else. In the basement is also my friend's worm bin for vermicomposting. I strongly oppose having a worm bin because it supports a large population of bugs and if the food were instead decomposed anaerobically, it would support far fewer invertebrates. But I can't prevent my friend from having a worm bin, so at least I can take pictures of it. In the upper right here you can see what I think is a white springtail. This picture is taken from outside the plastic worm bin looking in at a worm. For reference, here's a picture of springtails. In the upper left here, you can see a beetle or mite or something. Unfortunately, the worm bin supports a huge population of mites. This may be because it was very moist until recently, and mites do well with moisture. Here you can see a few mites on newspaper.
The mites are not just in the worm bin, but also in piles of what looks like thick dust around the edges of the bin on the floor. Here's some of that dust put onto my microscope stand, where each little increment of the ruler is one millimeter. I can't tell whether these are dust mites or soil mites that have migrated from the worm bin. They look a lot like dust mites, and they're basically the right size to be dust mites. They're roughly one third of a millimeter. But one reason I'm doubtful about them being dust mites is that I haven't found dust mites anywhere else in my entire house, despite using this microscope to check dust on the floor, my mattress, my pillow, my clothes, my skin, my hair, and other places. Maybe dust mites aren't elsewhere in my house yet because it's not humid enough. Today's humidity is 20%, while dust mites don't grow well below 50% humidity or so. But I don't know if that's the reason I haven't found dust mites outside the basement, or if there's some other explanation. Unfortunately, the mite population in the basement is through the roof. It's so bad that much of the floor contains mites, as shown here. This means one can't walk without killing some mites, and this is a reason to walk as little as possible in the basement. Next, I dug up a patch of grass and soil from outside my front door. Happily, I found no insects at all in the dirt or on the grass. The only invertebrate that I did find in the soil was this, which I think is a nematode. You can compare it against this picture from the internet. It eventually curled itself into a ring, which made it look like the nematodes in this picture. Next, I went outside to a patch of grass and flowers right next to my driveway. In the upper right here, you can see a yellow bug crawling up a plant and behind it you'll see a few more little bugs like it. This video shows a glimpse of another bug, but I'm not sure what kind. The most numerous bug outside was probably ants, and there were ants from several different species and different sizes. Because there are so many ants on the ground, I try to avoid walking outside as much as possible. I would guess that there were about one to five ants per square foot of grass area. As you can see, it was hard to get the ants in focus because they moved so quickly. Some ants were on flowers. I picked one of the flowers and put it into a Ziploc bag along with one ant who was currently on it. This footage shows the ant in the bag on the flower. After I was done filming, I put the ant back outside. This completes the spoken portion of this video. What comes next is more extensive footage of the ant on the flower and the basement mites. I included longer duration shots of these critters because I wanted to provide more data on how the animals behave. However, this is probably boring to most viewers, so feel free to stop the video here.
Thank you.